Hey there, friend. It's Lux and Riot, and if you're new here, we live in that 6x12 cargo trailer there behind us. As I'm putting this video together, I'm currently in Florida, but when I last left off, I was just entering a lot docking situation in Alabama, which provided me some room and space to take a breather and <laughs> meet some animals and get some projects done on the cargo trailer, which is going to be the primary crux of today's video is the adjustments. I wish they were improvements, but let's call them adjustments to the cargo trailer that I have been making. And hopefully by the end, you guys can leave me some feedback on where you think I should go and what direction, but I'm going to lead you through what I have been able to accomplish ish kind of. So the lot docking situation allowed me to take a moment to clean out the back of my truck and do some reorganizing, which was highly needed. It was also close to a Wahlburger, so I got to experience that for the first time, and I have to say I recommend it. It's a really good restaurant, really cute. It allows you to also support the handsome Wahlbergs, which is nice, uh, while getting great food. So must recommend. This particular one was near Huntsville, Alabama, and I'm okay saying that because I'm no longer there. The next day, I went to the ReStore, which is a discount store through Habitat for Humanity, if you're not familiar. But you can get used furniture, which I was really hopeful to find something that was going to help me rebuild out the cargo trailer by not actually rebuilding it, but like putting furniture in. Something a little bit better than the IKEA stuff I have, but something that I don't have to try and make myself. Unfortunately, I was sorely disappointed and found nothing that was applicable to the situation at hand. Now before we continue on talking about some of the, I want to say improvements, but more like adjustments that I've made to the cargo trailer, a little info on the lot docking situation. This is extended family of the person that I'm traveling with, my partner. On a scale of completely comfortable to, oh my god, this is so far outside of my comfort zone, it was pretty far outside my comfort zone because I don't know these people. And they were gracious enough to not only give us space on their lot, they have a decent acreage to park our rigs, but they also gave us a room to crash in for a few nights and a bathroom to do some cleaning up. They were really gracious hosts and I very much appreciate their generosity and patience with us as we kind of took advantage of the situation which was fine and not the problem I'll get to the problem here in a little bit that required us to leave another thing that I did while I was lot docking on the property was try and figure out my trailer wiring I got some advice from one of you kind viewers thank you so much for the money that have reached out to me uh, but it seems like it's just gonna be out of my wheelhouse so I did do some crawling under the rig to take a look the wires are in the metal framing. I have to pull them all out. I also attempted to take the wall panels off to take a look at that, but I, again, I think this is going to be best up to an expert, which I am not. With the trailer wiring kind of a fail, it was time to move on and do some trailer deconstruction and simultaneously take advantage of having a washer and dryer nearby. So Ryan and I got to deconstructing the trailer a little bit while I did some laundry. Since I didn't find anything at the Habitat for Humanity Restore, I decided to work with what I have because there's no IKEA or anything like that nearby. So I decided I was going to move the cabinets around. In order to do that, I had to remove this wall outlet which left some exposed wires. So I'm wrapping them up in electrical tape. Now the only time that these wires would be active is if I am plugged into shore power. After two years on the road in this cargo trailer, I have yet to do that, so I'm not too worried about it, but the electrical tape will hopefully keep anything from being an issue should I ever plug it. Since I'm moving things around anyway, it's obviously an opportune time to take everything out, reorganize it, and clean it. As you can see from me helping to transport my partner's motorcycle, I have some damage to the front of the cabinets, but no worries, things are going to happen, especially when you live on the road, and so we'll deal with that here in a little bit. Another advantage when you're lot docking is having access to garbage. The convenience of having a garbage canister close when you're doing any sort of remodeling project is doubly true but something that I try to be mindful of is not contributing too much to their garbage, which would take up space and could be very annoying. And so I allowed myself two bags of garbage 
for the entire two weeks that we were there to make sure that I didn't piss them off. They got pissed off from something else, which again, I'll talk about later. Hello. Another objective I had to keep steady throughout the two weeks is my job. Now I work kind of part-time as a virtual assistant and I'm able to freelance those hours so it isn't so bad. Basically it means I get time to stop and say hello to roosters and dogs and do laundry and fix up my cargo trailer as long as I get my hours in throughout the rest of the day. Hi, hi. All right, and as promised, we're finally gonna get to some of this deconstruction. Not that we haven't really, but it's been intermixed with cleaning. At any rate, we're gonna start by taking this ding countertop off. Now, I only use spar urethane to seal this, and I would not recommend that going forward, or at least be ready to redo it maybe every six months because it does not hold. Now these cabinets that I have here are from Home Depot and they're technically kitchen wall cabinets. So they're supposed to be mounted up on the wall, which means they're only one foot deep, which is great because I have a tiny space. Because I'm using them more like countertop cabinets or as a base for a countertop, I just have them kind of haphazardly screwed into the wall to make sure that they didn't move while I traveled. And I have to take those screws out now to move them. Now I've been on the road for two and a half years and in this cargo trailer for two years and I have yet to ever move these cabinets. And it's extremely humbling to see what happens when you don't seal the back of the cabinets to the wall. It's disgusting. Not only do I have coffee stains running down the back of the wall once I remove these cabinets, but behind this one, I have bacon grease. And I remember this happening. I tried to put hot bacon grease into a mason jar when it was still hot causing it to explode and I had glass and bacon grease everywhere. I thought that I caught most of it, but really I didn't and it's disgusting. So if this ever happens to you, just remove the cabinets right away and clean it up because this was one of the nastier things that I've ever experienced and it's in my own house. Now with those cabinets gone, I'm also able to pull up these awful foam floor mats. This was a complete fail. I had them everywhere over the vinyl that I put down thinking they would give more cushion and insulation and they just tore apart within months. So I cut around the cabinets and this is all that was left and I'm so thankful to get rid of it. However, somehow pulling that up showed how much nastiness is under there too. So more cleaning to be had. This really tells me that every six months, or at least every year, I should probably just pull all my stuff out and give it a good clean. Even stuff that seems like it's mounted furniture. Another fail that I have here from my original build is not using enough glue for this vinyl flooring. I was kind of unsure of using the vinyl flooring, so I didn't do a good job gluing, but now I have these goddamn bowls that I don't know how to get rid of. 
Now, naturally, it wouldn't be a Lux and Riot DIY video without some sort of injury. So, of course, I have to take a moment to address one. And this happened when I tried to take the aluminum wall panels off after having removed the cabinets, as aforementioned when I was talking about trailer wiring. I was hoping to be able to see the wires behind the wall panels. Uh, this was not a reality, and I just simply got an injury in the process. No big deal, though. We'll move on. At this point, the Alabama sky decided to rain, which means I lost a lot of room and a lot of light. Instead of fighting the conditions, I decided to work with them and run to the grocery store to pick up ingredients to make dinner. Now, I can cook for myself. I can even cook for me and one other person, maybe. But to cook for 11 people is something different. I enlisted the help of my mother, who sent me an easier version of an old Lithuanian recipe for spinach quiche and uh, I did my darndest and it turned out edible. The next day it was time to get back to business and putting the cabinets back into the cargo trailer but in new positions. Now one of the challenges I ran into when trying to move things around the way that I wanted to was things that I already had installed like the diesel heater. I don't really have plans to move my bed around or rebuild that just yet, but with me wanting to put the cabinets here, I had to redo these little blocks that I have for the diesel heater, fuel pump, and fuel filter because they're kind of delicate. Now, obviously, the plan of action is to split up where I had that bank of cabinets and the long countertop into two sections, one opposite of the door right when you walk in and one over here to the side. My hope is to give my partner's motorcycle better space during transport and also to give me some negative space when the motorcycle isn't in there to give the cargo trailer maybe a bigger feel. Also, I just need something different. After spending a little time just simply staring at what I've done, I decided it's sufficient for now and re-anchor the cabinets to their new positions in the walls with some screws and call it a night. The next morning I decided to get my virtual assistant work out of the way first thing, take some time to say hello to the hens and the roosters. And then it was time to get back to work on our tiny home on wheels, doing the best we can with what we have. Since I'm repurposing the cabinets that I already have, I thought that I would treat myself to some new countertops made out of better quality wood and sealed with a far better product than simply spar urethane. My next step is to take the cabinets that I have off the walls to reposition them as they no longer make sense with the schematics that I am changing. With the cabinets in the new position and the new countertops on, the next step should be to use this epoxy, but I don't feel emotionally ready for it just yet, and anyone that's used epoxy might know what I mean. So I decided to distract myself by washing the exterior of the rig of the cargo trailer and uh, also the truck. Now, as an aside, I have yet to wash this cargo trailer in the two years that I have had it, so this is a very overdue cleaning. Now, before I could get back to work on the cargo trailer, we promised that we would help the family that we're staying with move goats from their old house to this new house that they had just moved into that we're staying at. With the goats moved into the new house and settled in, it was time to start tinkering back around in the cargo trailer. And I can't really decide on what I want to do, so I simply just started putting stuff back into the cabinets. 
That evening, a fight broke out between my partner and his cousin about politics, and we were forced to leave the property. So we moseyed on down to Florida, where we are currently, and I'm not quite at all satisfied with my progress with the cargo trailer, but I will be continuing it now that we're here. And uh, you can kind of see the state of disarray that I'm living in, which is rather uncomfortable. Some people already feel a nomadic life is uncomfortable, and then you look at this hot mess and you wonder why they think that. Uh, but we're going to continue making some progress. So I hope you'll join us for the next video where I talk about this awesome free camp spot we have here in Florida. And hopefully I have more progress, livable progress, than what you're currently looking at. So thank you so much for joining us for this somewhat hot mess of a video. And we look forward to seeing you for the next one. So you too can enjoy what it's like to live full time on the road in a cargo trailer while working full time because you just simply like the freedom. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.